Day one of the annual Women's Expo for Northwest Arkansas kicked off today at its new home. Attendees took advantage of an opportunity to one-stop shop at more than 175 different businesses. Plenty of shoppers and some familiar faces at the 13th annual Women's Expo. The new location at the Benton County Fairgrounds provided the perfect setting for area women to shop till they drop. We do uh, labels for our names so that we can just go on and see everything and we make sure we get to every booth and we just love it. It's become a tradition for us to grandmother, granddaughter thing to go each year. The event helps local small businesses while offering a great opportunity for women to network. Businesses that don't get a lot of community spotlight, so it's great to come out here and find things you didn't know were in the area. We even found a few men tagging along with their special gal. Just the enjoyment of being here. Uh, it's a family day for us. And then we're going out to our granddaughter's birthday. 4029 and the Arkansas CW are partners for the event. And today, some of the on-air personalities had a chance to meet fans in person. There are several people I know who probably put their names in, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to find you. And the Women's Expo wouldn't be complete without the 4029 Get Ready Weather Quiz. The fun event has become a fan favorite at the Expo and the entire 4029 weather team. Always a fun event. Uh, Women's Expo picks up again tomorrow from 11 to 4. There was even a chance to win a $2,500 gift card. The city of Benville and downtown Benville Incorporated hosted a multicultural celebration. A family-friendly event gave residents an opportunity to celebrate their diverse cultures and introduce them to other families. The event wrapped up at 9 o'clock. Organizers say every uh, over 1,000 people attended this afternoon. This morning in Rogers, people in our community came together to create a sea of purple to celebrate survivors and honor the lives lost to pancreatic cancer. It was all part of that pan can purple stride walk to end pancreatic cancer. One participant and survivor says she hopes the event raises awareness and unites the community. You're here for a reason. You're here to unite. You're here to fight a journey that a lot of people don't know about and just showing your support it's all that matters because it's people like us that need it, that makes us happy, that makes us that there is hope. Uh, Heidi tells us taking part in her first Purple Stride gave her hope. Now she passes it along to other people going through the same challenge. Keep fighting. Don't give up. Be strong. And never take a knee down. Be a fighter. A uh, fundraising event helps raise money to support essential research like the PANCAN Early Detection Initiative. It also funds free resources and support for pancreatic cancer patients. A Van Buren hosted a career fair today to help those who will be losing their jobs at the city's Tyson plant. The plant closes on May 12th, leaving around 1,000 people without a job. The career fair was open to everyone, but was especially created for Tyson workers. The fair featured more than 20 companies from an area and ran from 10 to 2 over the Van Buren High School. We caught up with one of the Tyson workers who's unsure about his future. What can you do about it? Well, draw unemployment for a while. Until that runs out, then I'm probably going to retire. Uh, for those workers who want to stay on board at Tyson, the company's offering a $15,000 incentive to move locations. Tyson announced more layoffs this week. According to a memo sent to employees, the company is laying off 15% of senior leadership roles, 10% of corporate roles. We reached out to Tyson to find out how many jobs that is, but officials would not tell us. President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy have yet to reach an agreement on how to raise the U.S. financial debt ceiling. Analysts say the disagreement could have an effect on the American standard of living. John Lawrence reports. The United States reached its $31.4 trillion spending limit on January 19th, and that's when the battle in the Beltway began. This power struggle between Democrats and Republicans, and frankly between Republicans and Republicans, could lead to the first default in a major advanced economy since the Great Depression and World War II. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's 320-page Limit, Save, and Grow Act, which passed through the House, raises the debt limit but trims the budget. The polls are overwhelmingly showing that they, do, they want cuts in spending in order to raise the debt ceiling. We've done the responsible thing, uh, and the President and the Senate need to accept that. President Joe Biden and most Democratic lawmakers aren't interested. The discussion 
on the debt ceiling ought to be agree to raise the debt ceiling, period, end of story. And tell us about when you want to schedule discussions on the budget. They ought to be separate. If an agreement on the debt ceiling isn't reached by summer, officials say treasuries could tank, interest rates spike, the dollar sinks, and global economies reel. The banking system, particularly small and medium-sized banks, still have a lot of losses on their books simply because interest rates went up a lot. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the debt ceiling deadline could come as soon as June. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Now, economists say unless an agreement is reached, 10 percent of the country's economic activity could come to a stop, causing many jobs to be lost. <laughs> well, guess how Turpentine Creek Refuge had an opportunity to feast with Beast this evening. It was all part of the refuge's 31st anniversary celebration. Now, those who attended were able to enjoy live music and eat dinner with the big cats. Today's event also celebrated the passage of the Big Cat Public Safety Act. The owner says today's event was an opportunity to educate the public on big cat safety. We're trying to teach people these are predators, not pets. These are wild animals that don't deserve to live in people's basements, backyards, or closets. I mean, we've rescued from just about every situation you could ever imagine. Tiger King's Carol Baskin was a guest speaker at today's event. And March Turpentine Creek announced that they'll be partnering with Baskin to bring a large portion of her cast to Northwest Arkansas. New funding is on the way following federal gun reform. Just an extra disappointment in a state I know could benefit from more dedicated funding for it. The state's pushing for federal aid. They're going to do a test at the end to determine uh, whether these aviators are ready to get back, uh, you know, in the seat and fly these uh, exercises. U.S. Army is grounding all aviation amid rising safety concerns. The mandatory training crews must go through to get the planes and helicopters back in the air.
The Army has temporarily grounded all aviation units and will require mandatory training for all pilots and crews. This comes one day after a deadly mid-air collision between two Army helicopters. ABC's Mona Karsar Abdi joins us now with details. The U.S. Army's Chief of Staff has grounded all Army aviation amid rising safety concerns following two recent helicopter crashes. The order comes after Thursday's mid-air collision of two Apache helicopters returning from a training mission in Alaska. Three soldiers were killed and another hospitalized. In March, nine soldiers were killed during a routine night training flight in Kentucky when their Black Hawks collided. While both incidents remain under investigation, the Army says there is no indication of any pattern between the two. This is not obviously something that's acceptable to have this amount of uh, incidents causing this uh, amount of death uh, to soldiers. Uh, it needs to be addressed. There was also an incident back in February. A single Black Hawk helicopter from the Tennessee National Guard spiraled out of control and crashed, killing two guardsmen. The Army says pilots and crews will complete mandatory training on safety and awareness, with the exception of aviators participating in critical missions. The Army will review the risk approval and management process, aviation maintenance training program, and supervisory responsibility. Units on active duty must complete the required training before May 5th, while the Army National Guard and Reserve will have until the end of May. When they look at this training, they're going to do a test at the end to determine uh, whether these aviators are ready to get back uh, you know, in the seat and fly these uh, exercises. The Army saying in a statement, quote, the safety of our aviators is our top priority and the stand down is an important step to make certain that we are doing everything possible to prevent accidents and protect our personnel. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. In Florida, a suspected tornado has left behind quite a bit of damage in the southeast part of the state. The storm raced through the area on Saturday. Strong winds toppled cars, trees, and power lines. Some homes also had their roofs blown off. So far, there have been no reports of any injuries. Right, time now for another look at the forecast. For that, we send it back to 4029 meteorologist Robert Sir. And Robert, the final week of April, and as they say, uh, you know, April showers bring May flowers. So uh, hopefully, we'll wait and see if that's effect. Yeah, and it has been a wet first now basically four months of the year. We'll talk oh, yeah. about that here mm. in a second with a, a look at the precipitation, but uh, kind of a, a tale of two days today with it was really crummy this morning and really nice this afternoon. Fayetteville today, 67 degrees, uh, another below average day. We should be in the lower 70s by now. Today in 1962, we climbed uh, today uh, to 88 degrees. Fort Smith, nice and quiet as well, where we climbed to 77 right where you should be. Uh, for this time of the year, 93 on this day in 1962. We talked about the precipitation, everybody running above average for the year. This is from January 1st until today. Uh, you can see everybody uh, 15 or 16 inches of precipitation so far. So when you see everybody running a surplus, it's not surprising that the area is not experiencing any drought conditions or any abnormally dry conditions. As of the latest data from our friends over at the Drought Monitor, as of the data they released uh, from April 25th, but just to our west, you can see most of Kansas in an exceptional drought, northern Oklahoma, basically along the Highway 412 corridor. But it's gotten a lot better along the California coast. Uh, most of the state was under a severe to exceptional drought, and now little, if any, of the state is under any sort of drought conditions. Just all this yellow is abnormally dry. That is not a drought. So just outside of Los Angeles, you get a moderate drought, and then the northern part of the state, there are moderate drought. That's it. That's great news for those folks. Uh, 50s and 60s right now across Northwest Arkansas. Uh, River Valley, our temperatures uh, a few degrees warmer, basically in the lower 60s. Big picture, uh, we got this weak boundary that's going to try to slide through tonight. Uh, basically, we'll change our winds and turn them out of the northwest, which will usher in very slightly cooler air as we go into tomorrow. Notice tomorrow morning you're waking up 30s and some 40s. A chilly start. You'll need a jacket if you're walking your dog. I uh, can't rule out a stray sprinkle tomorrow afternoon. We'll be on the edge of a boundary that's setting up uh, to our west, and there could be a sprinkle that rides along that in the River Valley tomorrow. I don't think most of you shouldn't see anything. By the time we wake up Monday morning and headed back to work, uh, mid, to, mid to upper 30s in northwest Arkansas, there could be some very, very isolated patches of patchy frost Monday morning. Lows tonight in the 40s will rebound nicely tomorrow into the 60s, but a degree or two cooler than we were today. 
for the last day of the Women's Expo. No problems if you're headed out there to check out your, 40, your favorite 4029 news personalities. Uh, into middle of next week also looks nice and quiet with sunshine and some clouds before another system could bring us some showers Thursday and Friday. Uh, Friday, Cinco de Mayo already. Can't believe we're already into May. May starts Monday, the final month of meteorological spring, if you can believe that. As I show you the five-day or the seven-day forecast for the River Valley, which is also nice and quiet. But were the hog bats quiet on the diamond today? Meredith Mulkey has the answer to those pressing questions after the break. This weekend, Bogle Park is host to a top 15 marquee matchup with 12th ranked Arkansas and number three Tennessee going head to head. And it all started today. This one was all defense through the first four innings before the Vols start the scoring here in the fifth. Mackenzie Donahue launches one down the right field line and it's out of there. A solo homer for the lead, but no worries because the Razorbacks have a response. It's SEC freshman of the week, Reagan Johnson at bat. She'll pop it right over the pitcher and into the gap there out center. Italia Rijo running home and Vols think they have her out, but after further review, it's ruled obstruction of the plate, so it's good for a Razorback run, and we're all tied up at one apiece. But Tennessee comes back with two more runs of their own after that, and Arkansas unable to answer. So game one goes the way of the Vols 3-1, to one, but there's still two games to be played.